if I wanted more money, I'd be making move bongs, honey. <laughs> you are a disrespectful piece of me. Be sick of me. Prepare right now to be sick of me. People call me liar. You guys have created this character, Liar Lynn, that doesn't even exist. What the? Hello? Huh? Don't binge in the definition that they say, like three times the amount of food you normally eat. Like I've never done that. BED is very, very easy to diagnose yourself because I mean, if you sit there and you're eating huge, large, like I'm talking to the point of illness and you still keep eating, that's binging. So. I'm just like so full and I just feel so disgusted with myself. Um, <sighs> the regret is real. Um, and you as well, I just don't feel like I binge and I'm just starting to like see it more clearly now because like I don't think I've ever wanted to look further deeper into hey, is this binging or is this just a food addiction? Emotional eating and I already know it's gonna happen because I have some food in front of me. So I kind of want to make this video to show you guys how it is for me on a day where I just do not care. I want to eat all my feelings. I want to binge. I feel possessed for the whole day. Like I don't care. Like I'm not myself kind of like I'm on the outside watching myself. And I just wanted to show you guys kind of what that looks like for me. Um, I don't want anyone to be upset with me for binging. I know that's what is going to happen. But as someone who is sharing her journey on YouTube, do know that binging will forever be a part of my life. My psychologist has to beat that in my head that, you know, I'm not just gonna not binge. It's something I'm gonna suffer with forever. But the time frame of relapses in between should get lengthier and lengthier and lengthier. I just know people are gonna be upset with me and that's just unfortunate. You were a pound, so I'm not even up a pound, but I know it's because I weighed myself so much earlier than usual. I didn't get as much sleep and like just the mixture of things is just a fluctuation, but I'm okay with that because I'm still down 2.8 pounds in three days. Um, I'm okay with that, like that's totally fine. It's a little discouraging. Normally when something like this happens, I'm just like, I'm gonna eat whatever I want. I'm gonna, mm. it puts me in like a binging like state of mind, but I'm not gonna let that happen today. Okay, so Becky and I went to Kroger's and I just got something for tonight because I know I'm gonna be hungry later. So I got this bread. I love that type of bread with sandwiches. Um, where is it? Motherfucking, where is it? Where the is it? Okay, I also got, I'm gonna be eating these later. This is six Big Cup Reese's. I'm probably gonna eat all of them or just like five or something. Um, and then this is the lunch meat I like to use. Rotisserie seasoned deli fresh. So I use that. Two of them. I didn't get fries or anything and I got a Sprite. So, okay, so here is my final meal. The sandwich and Funyuns and in the sandwich, that's what that looks like. I like my sandwiches pretty plain and we have a eat. <laughs> Like I said, my last hurrah. I got some Almond Joy. I haven't had these in forever. I hated them as a little girl, but I love them now. For dinner, Becky and I are gonna have some Hamburger Helper. Loved this as a little girl. That just was a go-to when I was living with my parents. And I got a Dr. Pepper and a Sprite Zero. So that is everything. Share certain things, but I've been watching Tammy Lemon lately. Sorry, now I'm rambling. Um, I've been watching Tammy Lemon lately ever since she started doing Vlogmas and like she's very open about her binging. People are supportive of that. And I have been open about my binging for almost a decade on YouTube and 
I don't get the same kind of support. And I wish her nothing but forever support because it gets rough out there, folks, <laughs> when you binge and you feel like shit, whether that be physically or mentally, and then you share that as on your YouTube and people attack you and they're just so horrible. Which this is what happens <laughs> pretty much every day. Um, I'll wake up super motivated to lose weight, eat healthy, count my calories, and the first half of the day is great. And then I'm like, well, let's go out to eat. And, you know, I'll count my calories no matter what I get, which once I get there, I overdo it, as you guys saw. And then I tell myself, I, won't, I just won't eat for the rest of the night. I sit there and lie to myself over and over. I'm like, oh, I got this, I got this. Like, you know, I had my breakfast, I had a big meal. I don't need to eat at all for the rest of the night. I'm fine for hours. I'm talking, I'm fine for literally hours. Probably six hours later, and I'm ready to eat the house. It's this overpowering sensation that I get and only people who struggle with binge eating will ever understand. So I don't really wanna sit here and have to explain myself what I experience when I go through it, but it's really terrifying. I feel like I'm almost being possessed. And I know a lot of people who don't suffer from binge eating, they look at it and they say, no, this is just a lie for you to eat. I literally hate food right now. I hate food so bad, but I'm about to stuff my face. This is honestly the truth of what is about to happen right now. I have made two TV dinners. They're Indian. I will show you a picture right now. So that was them before I cooked them, and this is them now. So this is both of them together. This is how much it is. And it doesn't stop there. I also have a bag of things that I will be eating. I have some kettle cooked mesquite barbecue chips. I won't eat all of these, but I'll probably eat a good half or three fourths of the bag. I also got some ultimate chocolate chunk cookies. This comes with, I think three cookies. I've actually never had these before. Yeah, it comes with three cookies. I'll probably eat two or all of them. And the last thing I got, which this is one of my go-tos, is a milk chocolate Dove bar. And I'm going to sit here and eat all this and I'm going to remind myself, oh, it's okay, I'm 27 years old. I'm binging my life away. Oh, disease this, disease that. All while feeling completely blissfully happy, but also guilty and disgusted. This is the truth. A chocolate peanut butter, yes, that was the first thing. And then I ordered this like open face turkey cheesy onion sandwich. Some like cheesy and steak e fries. It was pretty tasty. Um, then I got some Starbucks. This is just a chai tea. And I got some of their mandolin cakes. It's it's probably because I either had one of these. I plan on having one of these. It is a Sonic slushy. So, large curly fry. Looks good. So good. I got a mac and cheese. It's a stir before eating. Who knows what? Wow. So it looks like it's just tartar sauce, the fish, some lettuce. Looks good. Smells good. Let's dive into it, shall we? It was when I said um, that I don't eat 6,000 calories a day, but then in another clip I said that I eat around 4,000 to 6,000. That one, I can't really justify. That's the first one where I can't really justify it. I think sometimes, you know, just admitting out loud is like, oh yeah, sometimes I eat 6,000 calories. I feel like that really just like, it's hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe because 6,000 calories is so many calories and we all know that. And it's hard that one person can eat that many calories and it still doesn't feel like they ate that many calories. Like on any given day, I can eat anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000. And I think it's the days that I binge which I don't really binge as much anymore, so I'm very grateful for that. The days that I binge, that's when it gets up into the 6,000s. The days that I don't binge, I stay more around 3,000. Hey. So, I wouldn't say I had a mental breakdown. That's not really the case here. Anyone who would have gotten the news that I got in would have just cried. It would have been an emotional blah day, and that's what it was for me. So I binged, and I binged hard. I weighed myself the next day at 554.2. So I gained. I binged that day as well. It's almost as if I couldn't get a grip on life. Um, 
on the 23rd I wanted to weigh myself again because I was like I know that I've gained more weight from another binge for me a binge I could gain anywhere between two to like 12 pounds in one day ask anyone <laughs> it's sodium it's fat it's food it's gross so um, I weighed my, wanted to weigh myself on the 23rd I stepped on the scale and the readings were going Blah, 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 blah. like it wouldn't stop on a number but it did stay within like a two pound radius everything is becoming harder for me so sometimes when I step on the scale that is hard for me and I lose my balance and my legs shake a lot like a lot <laughs> um, which you guys will see here in a minute because I'm standing on a small platform when my legs are so huge and they're not used to standing like this eater and i tend to do it more so at night i definitely definitely really really believe that going to the gym during the time that i normally do my daily binge is going to help me a lot the therapist i was seeing did say that sounds like a binging disorder type of problem um and then here when i was 27 I was actually like I've made videos on this but I was talking to a therapist on betterhelp.com and I'm not trying to like talk bad about it but I for one just don't recommend it but you never know it just didn't work for me and the person on there who I was talking to did say that I had binge eating disorder the thing is though on betterhelp.com they are not allowed to diagnose you with anything so that kind of shook me and was like it kind of made me like I saw a red flag so I did cancel my better help I definitely wasn't lying it's all just very circumstantial and when I was 16 I shouldn't have taken that and ran with it um, I have never been diagnosed with BED appropriately <laughs> because I've never seen someone for it. That's definitely something that I probably should do, but I feel like BED is very, very easy to diagnose yourself because, I mean, if you sit there and you're eating huge, large, like I'm talking to the point of illness and you still keep eating, that's binging. So I don't really wanna go uh, much more into that. So let's food. Here are the chips. Mexican rice and we have some tamales candy I have Twix I have Snickers I have a caramel simply caramel Milky Way and a regular Milky Way so I will show you guys exactly how many I choose to eat um, each pack of these has six and then, so you guys will be able to tell how many I've eaten by how many are left so I'm gonna eat some of those so I ended up having all of the Twix um this is the stage where I feel guilt I honestly was feeling sick because I ate so much the minute I started eating the Twix bikes kept doing it um I was having guilt and um, now I'm ashamed and mad at myself and I wish I could take it all back. But as it's happening, you you just can't control it. It is by far one of the most frightening feelings in the world. Too fast because that will like literally make you binge and you won't be strong enough to cancel out a binge. And two nights in a row now, I'm, I'm going to be able to not binge because I'm eating around like 24 like today I ate 2400 calories um, my fitness pal wants me to eat 2700 um, the TDEE wants me to eat like 3000 so I'm definitely eating in a very big defi def deficiency <laughs> I hate that word but yay uh, today went really good I'm proud of myself and yeah so no binging tonight did my 8000 steps and today's great. Um, I just noticed I'm more hungrier and normally on a day where I am binging and overeating, I eat anywhere between 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 calories in one day. So my goal, I've changed it to just not overeat to 3,000 calories. Just don't eat anywhere near 3,000 calories. Um, so if I have 2,400, that's okay. For me, where I wake up and I think I'm gonna be on track, but then somehow I end up failing. So I'm actually kind of glad that I chose this day to do a what I eat in a day video 
so I can show you guys what I do to myself. How many calories I eat when I'm actually off track and fail in the middle of the day. So I decided to have Subway. So that's that. I got two bags of chips. Why? I don't know. I... Sometimes I feel like I can't control myself, and that's honestly the bottom line. I honestly can't make any excuses. And I always have to have something sweet after I eat when I am not on track. So for the Subway sandwich was 580 calories, which isn't horrible. But then I decided to have two cookies, which came out to 420 calories for both. And plus both bags of chips together was 470 calories so for that full meal was 1470 calories so for today dinner is mexican food so i was not able to count the calories on this because they didn't have calories on their menu but on their menu this is called a papa mexicana which is fries with chicken onion bell pepper and cheese and it's one of my most favorite go-to meals when I don't feel like cooking. It's not healthy at all. And I always get chips and salsa, obviously. So this was before I ate on them. And then this is after. I just get a side of rice. And sometimes I get two sides. So for dessert, I had mint chocolate chip ice cream. And this might be weird to some people. But I like to have my mint chocolate chip ice cream. Well, actually any ice cream, let's be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I like to have any ice cream with milk. I'm crying it's because I have, I don't really wanna get into it, but I got some very bad news today. So let's not talk about that. Take my mind off of it with some dumplings, so. Twinkie's drinking water right now, so if you hear that. All right, let's take a bite. Mm. This is really good. Oh my God. So when I get this, I'll eat it in two separate meals. This is Singapore rice noodle. Yeah, I actually did not finish the Singapore rice noodle. I ate about half of it. I did finish the dumplings though. Those were really, really good. And later on that night, I decided to have something sweet. And I'll be like, okay, I don't wanna eat for the rest of the day. And then, oh, I do. And I eat, I eat a lot. And uh, I don't know, it's such a bad, just destruction. It's a complete destruction. Life. And I was diagnosed with binge eating um, about a year ago. And since then, I have seen a psychologist for a year. A lot has changed since then when it comes to like uh, my mentality and what I consider a binge and the whole thing. You guys have seen that firsthand. Um, I showed you guys a binge, I think it was in December, and you guys were like, that's just a normal meal. So... The way that I see binging is very different than the standard binging. Four. 469.4 has been haunting me for the last two years. Yeah, it's been two years. That is the lowest I can get. Today, I weighed in at 532.0. So in seven months, I have gained 62.6 pounds. Keeping it simple, trying not to binge, because I've been binging like every night. And then so, feeling really bad about it, and I've actually seen you get very close to tears. Yeah. Because you felt so bad about it. And it's just, you know, people want to sit there and say, oh, she doesn't really have binge eating. She's just saying. Honestly, I didn't even know binge eating was a thing until I met you. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's just like, after seeing what you go through, the guilt, the excitement in the beginning, the high you get off of it. That's really embarrassing. And then. You've never said this to me before. After looking at you and the guilt in your eyes. And then later on, whenever you ask me for more. Okay, I'm actually like getting emotional yeah you see that yeah and it's just like you know i don't want to i don't want to give you more but i know if i don't you are going to be upset you are going to be very upset but it's not i'm not upset at you i'm upset at the situation i know
is were you ever in love with becky to begin with i loved becky unconditionally like like i loved her like family i would have taken a bullet for her without a doubt i'm just not entirely sure i was actually in love which is okay but i loved her with all my heart and I gave her everything that I had. And I believe that she did the same. I believe that we both tried our best. And it just Why you always lying? Mm, oh my God. Stop fucking lying. Almost, Almost seven, seven months. months. Those goals. Those goals, those goals. Yeah, I look like Different. a big cherry. <laughs> big? Big? Hush. Are you calling me big? No, I was talking about me. Everybody's like, oh. All right, so. Do you want to tell them? Okay. Um. I guess I'm going to go ahead and just say it. Um, we have broke up. It happened Sunday. And. It was initiated by me. But the, th the fact of the matter is, is I've had a lot of time to think and reflect and we just want different things in life. You know, Amberlynn wants to leave Kentucky one day and she wants to see her family and she wants to move to another state and it's like, this is my home. And this is where my family is. And I don't want to leave. And. But I love her. I. I love her. She's always touching my butt. Yeah. <laughs> and my boobs. <laughs> okay. In my style, but the cut, yeah. I like the bangs. Look at me. Oh my god. That I'm digging. Oh my gosh. What are you not digging? No, no, I'm just saying. Girl, you look good. Look at that. I think so. Maybe you should keep your hair this length. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't want to believe <laughs> that Becky loves me. And people also don't want to believe that I love Becky. It's all such a weird thing. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Becky and I are in a happy relationship. Yes, every relationship has, you know, you might have your little annoyances here and there. But, y'all, we good. And I don't know. It's a, it's very much all coincidence. And I just figured to her. <sighs> oh no! Like you guys um, have serving cherries. <laughs> Welcome to Stream Queens. Um, you guys know that when I announced my engagement, you guys saw that like I didn't seem as happy as like a normal like person would be. And I kept trying to like tell you guys, no, that's not true. Like I am really happy. Like obviously, I was happy because it's like okay, I got a beautiful ring, and like Becky wants to be with me forever. Like it's a good feeling, but. Deep down in my gut, I I wasn't happy like I should have been. And like I come on live stream a lot and I try to like act happier than I really am sometimes. And I think that's what I did with the whole like engagement thing is like Hello. Um I'm engaged. So that is an actual situation. I <clears throat> am shook to the core. Um it was so <laughs> special and it was totally Becky the way she asked me um we're keeping that private for now <laughs> there are a few people who know you know close people but <laughs> oh my god I love her so much I wasn't happy like I should have been and like I come on live stream a lot and I try to like act happier than I really am sometimes and I think that's what I did with the whole like engagement thing is like I was trying really hard to be like yes I'm happy about this but I just felt I honestly didn't feel anything when she proposed and it's like it's so embarrassing but like I kind of like <laughs> this is so embarrassing to admit here's tea you know how like when you're when someone proposes like you're supposed to like cry like I low-key like tried to fake cry I know that sounds so bad oh my god admitting it is like so just horrible I don't know. Becky and I just weren't good like that. We're really good. During my time doing So Raw, I I will be talking about my past experiences. 
I am a human being with experiences as is everyone and I don't want to shy away from things that I've been through just because someone else was involved. That's silly. That's not only silencing me, but it's it's taking away my human experiences. So I don't care who was involved. I'm not shading anyone. I'm just talking about an experience where I was engaged. I've actually been engaged twice. The first time was when I was 17. So I, I don't even know if that really counts. We could maybe talk about that some other time. Just about almost two years ago, I was engaged. And I kind of want to share how I got proposed to because it's rather um, unique, if you will. So everyone has dreams of how they want their partner to propose to them. I know I do. I'm very vocal about it as well. I feel like if you have a certain dream or if you have like a certain ring that you want or a way that you want to be proposed to, let your partner know. If they do it, that's great. They listen to you. If they don't, well, that sucks. <laughs> So I've always been super vocal about how I want it to happen. Like I'm very much, I want it to be personal. I don't like no public proposals as sweet and as claiming as that is. Like you're literally letting everyone know like this is my woman. Like I love that, but I'm also super shy and I know it's hard to believe, but I don't like the attention on me. But I do want it to be romantic. Like, you know, some petals, some candles, some beautiful music. Like I want to be looking good, maybe right after a date night or, you know, just like super romantic. I'm talking like so cheesy that we're just both pepper jack cheese, like living our best life. Like I want cheesy. I want things that you see in stupid romantic movies. Like that's what I want. But how I was proposed to, <laughs> I was sitting in the living room. It was about 2 a.m and I was in a muumuu. I was like actual grandma chic. I had my floral muumuu on, living my best life. Don't think I showered that day. And I remember it being January 13th because my partner thought that she wanted to change that day for me because years prior, that's a day that I got broken up on, like where my heart broke. So she wanted to change that day for me into something special, which I get where your mind frame's at. It's, it's a good mind frame but it's also kind of weird all in the same. Your heart was in a good place, but it was in a place that I, I don't know. I don't know, it was just weird, okay? So I'm in my muumuu, not showered, hair greasy as per usual, and all of a sudden, like, she comes out, like she's also in her pajamas, like just living her best life. We both got the greasy hair, just living our actual uh, separate lives in the same home. I don't know. There was definitely a disconnect, especially when she walked out of the bedroom with something in her hand and it was like this clear box and it was small and I could tell something was in it. And she just sat down across from me and handed it to me and I looked at it. <laughs> you guys, it <laughs> this is embarrassing, but it's like an actual true situation type deal. It was a tiny pink vibrator with a engagement ring wrapped around it. Like it was like, say this is the vibrator. It was like on it like that. And she looked at me and said, will you have sex with me for the rest of my life? And I said, yes. I am, um, we hadn't had sex. We had sex one time in the last like three years. So it was, it was a definite, I don't know. It was very like disconnected. Let's break up, we are engaged. We are the closest thing to the opposite of breaking up it's just so funny um the reason why i didn't like say anything about it is because i thought it was silly people this whole like free becky hashtag free becky thing is so crazy because it's like becky's that type of person if she does not want to be with you she ain't gonna be with you um becky is capable of living on her own and creating a life for herself and she has a huge family like trust me if she did not want to be with amberlyn reed she would not be with amberlyn reed like there is nothing that i give her besides my love that she wants like she's she loves me she is with me because of me and i know a lot of people think it's because of this and because of that and because of this everything that you guys think that she's with me for she can get somewhere else just saying <laughs> okay so here looks like is this instagram yeah this is an Instagram Q&A that I did. I said, I bought the rings, Becky didn't. Um, okay, and then here, you can listen to me again. I do have a sleep apnea. Yes. Or that I pay for the ring, and I just wanna say that Becky actually paid for it. She gets commissions for her art. So, I don't know, that just like made me sad that a lot of people were just like, I'm gonna pay for your own ring, da, da, da. It's almost like, even if I did, who cares, but I didn't. Okay. 
So this was made after the breakup and this was after the engagement. Um, I'm pretty sure this was the live stream where I, uh, sorry, I'm getting emotional because I know exactly what I'm about to say and I'm just scared. So this was the live stream, I'm pretty sure, where I announced that I'm engaged, um, where I talked about it a lot. I don't want Becky mad at me. So Becky, if you see this, I love you as a person, but I need to be honest because <laughs> this is what this video is about. Um, I lied here. I wanted to protect Becky. Becky and I agreed that we would say that she bought the engagement rings. A lot of people were saying, oh, Becky used Amberlynn's money to propose, da 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 da. I didn't want people to think that. I also, selfishly, I will say that selfishly, didn't want people to think that I bought my own ring. I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Becky doesn't care if I talk about this. I don't care what she says. I don't care. Like, whatever. But um, we never kissed. We, like, never hugged. Like, she never complimented me. I probably didn't compliment her. Like, I wasn't perfect either. Um, there was just nothing. Like, at all. So, it's like... I don't know. Nothing has changed, it feels like. Besides, maybe we vibe better because there's not this, like, big, heavy feeling, like, on our chest or on our shoulders anymore. Because it did feel kind of like I was stuck in a cage and I didn't know how to get out. And I'm pretty sure that's how she felt too, because you can like tell she just seems like relieved and stuff. Um, romance goes, you're still in love with destiny. Okay, so we're gonna do a little tea spilling here and destiny doesn't even know this. So I'm sure you guys will message her. So when I first got with Becky, I was very open about everything that I was feeling, what I've been through. That's just the type of person I am. I'm very transparent, especially if I'm fixing to be in a relationship. I want to say probably upwards to a year, year and a half after Destiny and I broke up, I was still in love with her. I was able to separate that though from the love that I felt for Becky. I was also in love with Becky. And I know there's like this like thing where people like you can't be in love with two people at once you can like have you guys ever heard of sister wives like hi like i'm not like into that that's not me i'm not like against it either but you you can definitely be in love with more than one person at a time i'm filming no you're not yeah it's going but seven it's, seconds it's not gonna be a video <laughs> what is with my hair i don't know hey guys so i did not vlog at all yesterday <laughs> this is the first time i've ever vlogged in front of you Love you. Love you, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also absolutely terrified. I'm terrified. And like she said, it's still shock. I've cried about it here and there. But for the most part, it's just like my brain is... Not computing? Not computing. It's just like all this is happening... So let's put this in a box and close the box for now and take care, care of everything that's still happening in life, you know? Yeah. So. Well, at least you're excited, you said. That's a little well, crazy sounding. It's because I'm excited to start <sighs> taking care of myself. You know, I want to go to the doctor, get my skin condition under. But you could do all that now. And Berlin with us together. You can't go to the doctor with us I've together? I've been talking about taking care of my diabetes, my weight, you with your weight, your issues. We're standing I don't in know. each other's way. I don't, I, okay. I'm sorry. 
I love you. I love you too. Dress. But anyways, looks like this. My boobies are out. That's, babe, why are you smirking? <laughs> You're bigger than a bowl of oatmeal. Oh, you're cute. I love you. I love you more. Creepy. One. It literally tastes like a donut. How much you take? Three. Oh, it's the best chili ever. You do. <laughs> I do. Woohoo! She keeps telling me that. It's great. Yeah. I even said it in Eric's vlog. I was like. Amarillo's chili's the bomb. <laughs> Why you always lying? We started, it's been like months now. It started as just like a little inside thing because we were like just joking around, like doing the patty cake and then all of a sudden we started doing the handshake and it kind of just like came natural and then we added on to it and now it's like our thing so we wanted to show it to you. <laughs> you coming? Chang chang chang. That's great. That's great. Okay. Jang Chang Chang. Jang Chang Chang. Are you guys? Just once that you treated Becky like absolute shit after the breakup. I will admit that my heart was extremely broken and I said things on live stream that definitely uh, kind of shocked me later when I went back and saw it. I was kind of harsh to her because it's like she just broke my heart. It was some weird mental gymnastics I was doing where it's like I kind of wanted her to feel some sort of pain I know a lot of people who get their heart broken they go through it differently but one of the stages that I feel like I went through without like thoroughly processing that I went through it was just like I was mad I was massively upset that like she proposed to me so I was assuming we were you know about to create a life together more than the one we had now and then she just like took that away a couple months later. So it was very much like I was angry. I, I feel like I don't feel anger a lot. So I guess when I do feel it, I kind of go through it without realizing it. And I think during the moments of my anger and me being really, really hurt, I, I can definitely say that I uh, said some mean things to her. And I have obviously apologized to her over it. Becky and I are together i think it's so weird well it is weird that you guys would think that we weren't together because we literally just got engaged <laughs> i'm so happy and engaged i'm so happy and engaged like but then all these random little things have been happening where it literally looks like we're not together anymore so I'm gonna start off with her not being in my videos. There's been no reason for her to be in my videos. I've done a lot of sit down videos, um, a lot of videos focused on weight and things like that. I haven't been vlogging. Vlogs are where you guys see Becky. You guys never see her during like a weigh in or a sit down q a unless the video is designed for her to be in it as well so like i get it <laughs> that part i understand but then you guys are like wait a minute where's that bed at though we simply just bought a new bed because we had two beds we have a guest room and the room that we sleep in and in the guest room the bed was a full size or it might have been a queen girl who knows but we wanted it to be a king bed so we trust me trust me just trust me like it literally felt like me and becky were just roommates so it was easier for me to move on you know so yeah hi crazy for coffee um but you have so much to work on within yourself mm -hmm. i'm just not entirely sure i was actually in love <laughs> If I wanted more money, I would be making move bombs, honey. <laughs> you are a disrespectful piece of...